ったし。<笑>The know-it-all, the 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 head honcho. Yes, I am of of the、uh, disaster preparedness over there. I like to think so. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Stand up. Don't be scared. <laughs> there you go, Mike. All right. Well, we're so glad to have you on because it's it, this is so timely、um, to to be talking about this because of the unfortunate instance of of the the the, the weather issues that that the city of Columbus has been dealing、yes. with, the train accident that has happened. And and also the heat that's been going on too,、um, so let me just first start things off. And I know Sherelle's going to jump in here on some questions too.、Um, but first of all, tell me about what's the role of of, of you know of the health department because people think of health department、um, as not being some not having a role in, in in a disaster in a sense, but more or less you know making sure the public's healthy. Sure. Well. Just like our counterparts at fire and at police, I mean, we work 24/7, 365, and in our case, to protect health and improve lives. And just like our colleagues at Columbus Fire and Columbus Police, we do everything to ensure that our community is safe. And in our case, from public health issues, and those could be anything from、uh, an infectious disease situation like the H1N1 outbreak from 2007 or a few years ago,、mm. and everything from、uh, maybe responding to different things. That are not more that that are a little bit less obvious how public health could be involved in, and so a great a great representation is with the recent train derailment that we had like what was it last week I believe yeah, a couple weeks ago a couple weeks ago and our our focus was well what's going on what's burning in the fire、mm-hmm. do we know do we know what's on the train and what actually is burning at that moment. And the important thing about that is, if there was happened to be something toxic, then we would have been a part of. Okay, well, what's in there? How is that going to impact human health? And treatment. And treatment. And then, of course, we would help、uh, set up with our colleagues at the American Red Cross. We would have some nurses, nurses that would come there and provide treatment if needed to those、uh, victims from the well, from the plume that was actually occurring.、Mm-hmm. So, so that's just an example of how we would be involved in different things. We work very closely both with Columbus Fire and Columbus Police on many, many different things. So that's just an example of. How we interact with them? Okay, okay.、Yeah. Well, that's a good overview. And I, although one thing I know I always look towards for Columbus Public Health is those green stickers on the on the、uh, doors、right. at the restaurants.、Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, main yeah, thing that I look for. Yeah. Yeah. It is, and that's a great point. I mean, we do we do so many things. I was kind of looking at it from the emergency preparedness、yes. perspective,、yes. which is where I work in that office. But you're right, we do so many things to protect the community. One of our most successful programs is the food protection program, in which、mm-hmm. we do go out. And we do make sure that the restaurants are safe for the community to go to, with everything from ensuring that the people are preparing the food, are, make, are cleaning their hands properly for sanitary reasons, and also to make sure that、um, the food is cooked at correct temperatures or held at right temperatures with refrigeration. So we do a lot that we go out into the community. A lot of people maybe just don't know the breadth of what we do at Columbus Public Health.、Yeah. You do that for the food carts too, don't you? We do all that for the food carts, and、mm-hmm. a lot of the food carts are very, very clean, and they do、mm-hmm. very, very good, and they have great food. So I would encourage. Encourage people to go out and, and frequent those as well. I've been、right. there. Oh yeah, yeah, me too. Me Several, too. Times. Yeah. Several times. Yeah. Several times. Yeah. Yep. So, what would you say are the top hazards for Franklin County? Yeah, that's a great question.、Um, A couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, our colleagues at the Franklin County Emergency Management and Homeland Security Agency put together a list of the top ten hazards that Franklin a County a risk of some exactly.、Mm-hmm. Um, and we have just some interesting things. Flooding is the number one issue.、Uh, severe winter weather, terrorism,、uh, infectious disease, heat, drought, hazardous materials. These are all part of what we see in Franklin County and Columbus as our top hazards.、Mm-hmm. And so、um, we are experiencing obviously 
uh, one now being the extreme heat situation, uh, which has been going on for quite a long time. We actually have the National Weather Service has actually issued a heat advisory for tomorrow where it's going to, the heat is going to feel like over 100 degrees. And people wow. who are exposed to that with, not, with chronic disease issues or breathing problems or the elderly. Special needs individuals. Yes. Special needs individuals are the most susceptible to heat. And we encourage people to go out and please check on your neighbors to make Correct. sure that they're okay. Correct. Very good point. Thank you. Mm. And in regards to the record-breaking heat temperatures, um, Lieutenant, how does the fire department help combat those and with water shortages? And well, we really do not have a water shortage problem. Okay. You know, uh, most of the fire trucks, if we have a fire, get their water from the city main, and the fire hydrant supplies plenty of water. And even if we would have an extreme water shortage, I, I think we would have enough water to fight a fire. Okay. Well, with the extreme heat, also though, you know, and we have dry grass all over the place. Yes. Have you we seen? We talked about that. Have you seen some 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 issues with fires? And, and I those haven't seen data about like you're talking about like wildland fires here in this mm -hmm. city or even in the state, but the state of Ohio mm -hmm. and the Columbus Division of Fire has put a preventive education effort in uh, warning the community about that. So I don't think we've had a serious problem about that right now. Okay. And even tomorrow, like you said, there is going to be a severe thunderstorm watch. So we may have. Some more rain or weather problem tomorrow. Well, well, that, I guess that's good in a way because mm -hmm. we're getting the water, but then bad in a way because you know, let's talk about this this latest storm that we had mm -hmm. that came through, knocked out power, um, all kinds of issues going on, and then we deal, deal with the elderly and, and that type of thing. And I guess, combined with the heat, what, how did the you know, what did the agencies do, and how was the red or how was the Columbus Public Health involved, and then also coordinated with fire in dealing with. The, the many, multiple issues that came out of that loss of power for over a week. Yeah, that's a great question, Napoleon. And uh, for the viewers who don't know, I believe that the correct terminology for the storm or the way that you say the word is a, a derecho. Mm -hmm. That's how you say it. It's a, I believe it's a Spanish term for mm -hmm. that kind of storm. Wow. It's very unique. It doesn't happen often. But when it does, it, I think they, that is actually referred to as a land hurricane. Mm -hmm. So what it is, is is a very unique storm where it has raced across very rapidly with very intense straight line winds where it literally can knock down, as we can see, many things, trees, other types of homes, things like that. Well, maybe not knock, knock down a home, but, you know, things mm -hmm. on a home, the roof, the gutters and things like that. Um, so that came through just sort of almost unexpectedly mm -hmm. on, on that on that Friday, mm -hmm. um, and what happened was uh, we had a significant power outage, and when we had that power outage with the, with combined with the heat, the one of the first things that happened obviously was that the first responders were going out to the emergency calls, the fire the firemen were going out to the emergency calls. In addition to the electricity crews trying to go out and immediately start repairing the electricity, I think. If everyone remembers correctly, I believe out on Hamilton Road, there was a yes. long line of cars. Yes, six poles went down. Six poles went down where there was live wires on top of cars. Now, that's a very critical situation. Mm. Um, but as, as, the, as the situation continued to unfold, some of the things that public health was involved in was um, part of the response led by the city and Mayor Coleman mm -hmm. to gathering all the department heads together to say, what's going on and what can we do to help respond? And so... Mm -hmm. While um, that was occurring, we started, uh, from our perspective in our Office of Emergency Preparedness, we started getting a lot of uh, kind of, well, let's just kind of prepare ourselves for if we have to implement our emergency response plans, our mm -hmm. crisis emergency risk communication plans, and start networking and working with our agency partners from the Ohio Emergency Management Agency, the Franklin County Emergency Management Agency, American Red Cross, our first responders and other city departments that we were ready to go. So we kind of uh, were about ready to move into the action mode. But I think that as we can see, I think that a lot of the um, a lot of the other agencies did a really good job mm -hmm. of taking Great care course. of business. Mm -hmm. Franklin County EMA, yes. right? And we worked together with them. We definitely worked together with them uh, as much as we could to to make sure that the community was safe. A seriously a coordinated effort. It was a it very seems, big coordinated yeah, effort, right, and right. it was, and it was, and it was. I think we did a pretty good job. Excellent, excellent. Well, well I'm sure you know that that helped minimize any additional damages or consequences to the to the uh, to the community. And speaking of community, I, I believe we have one caller on the line. Caller, are you there with your question or your comment? Yes, sir. I'm one of your regular, long time viewers. Uh, oh yes, yeah, yes. How are you doing today? Director Napoleon, thank you. Always a great topic, very pertinent, very great for public safety. Welcome to the new host. 
uh, your co-host and also Lieutenant Sawyer. Uh, Lieutenant Sawyer, I've been watching for years. You have great tips. Uh, really keep that good work. Thank you. Thank My you. question to the, uh, the gentleman with the health, uh, public safety. Yeah, the, the Columbus Public Health. Yes, sir. Uh, and I appreciate this topic is very critical. And I realize there's a lot of like, uh, the drought, uh, all the other issues uh, that are equally important. But I believe that Ohio has a really need a tougher laws on the smog that it's choking. All this mm -hmm. air we are breathing, breathing in daily, uh, the, especially seniors. Uh, but this is a very serious issue, the, the uh, water, polluted water, the uh, factory, the uh, truck smog, uh, air pollution, air quality. The smog issue is a very, very serious, and I think that's something that's 24-7 year-round, equally important with other issues. And thank you. I would like to hear uh, the gentleman address that. Great. Thank you so much, Karin. Thank you for continuing to, to watch our program and call, and we really appreciate that. And that's a, he brings up a great, great question yes. as regards to, to smog in the city and, 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 uh, and also the, maybe potential pollution or, or whatever levels in the water. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, I think one of, the, one of the biggest concerns that I have personally, and I think that just as a community we have, is the ensuring the health of our environment, our natural environment, mm -hmm. the air we breathe, the water we drink, uh, the land that we use to ensure that our children and our grandchildren are going to have a safe place to play, have clean air to breathe, and make sure that the, the resources that we have now and that we've enjoyed, we can still have for our, for our children. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's clearly an intersection between public health and smog and air pollution issues and water quality issues. Um, we work very closely as a public health agency with our colleagues at the Mid Ohio Regional Planning Commission. This is the organization that that sends out the air quality alerts, and these are also most frequently. Uh, with the extreme heat situations mm, that yeah. they have. So they kind of work hand in hand. Uh, you have kind of a stagnant air. There's a lot of humidity in the air. and We have a lot of particulate matter in the air with the sunlight hitting it. It kind of creates a situation where it makes it very difficult, especially for people with asthma. Um, as far as the water quality issues is concerned, I too agree that that is a major concern. Um, I know that the city of Columbus and our colleagues in the county and through the state uh, with different agencies, the Department of Natural Resources, the Ohio EPA, um, we all work very closely to continue to make sure that our water is clean. Whether that's disconnecting, um, you know, uh, or, or disconnecting uh, home sewage treatment systems that are failing and hooking them up to sanitary systems to make sure that we remove pollutants going into the water, to watershed management, which is a major concern that we have, where we want to make sure that uh, the water that is going into the streams is clean before it goes into the stream. So mm -hmm. we kind of look at it from a big perspective, and it's a very complicated issue, but clearly public health has a role in ensuring that our environment is safe uh, from here in the future. Wow, I mean, I, I hear all these different things, and this is disaster preparedness and being so proactive it sounds like so many things right. that you're doing is, is very proactive uh, uh, with, you know, and working with different, different levels of that, you know, the, whether it be water, whether it be smog, whether it be, you know, whatever we're doing. So really appreciate that you guys are on your toes there because it's keeping us safe, you know, like police and fire, what they do. But I also understand we have another caller, right. caller on the line. Uh, caller, are you there with your question or your comment? Yes, um, I'm here with a question. Um, my name is Mike P. I'm calling on the Columbus, Ohio. Um, I just have a real quick question. Uh, first of all, um, well, no, I'm, I'm not even going to say that. Um, I'm, I'm going to just get to my question. Um, and this question goes to anybody on the panel. Does anybody believe that carbon dioxide is the cause of global warming in today's society or in today's economy? Okay, Thank you for your question, Carl. Um, carbon dioxide, you know, I guess that's com coming from vehicles. Um, and, and, all kinds of sources. All kinds of sources. Planet, aren't we? Well, so, 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 so let me ask you, is that, do you, do, does the Columbus Public Health see that as an issue also as, as far as how do we, you know, prevent that from going into the atmosphere? Um, and is that causing the global warming as, as so many talk about? You know, that's a, that's a great question, and it's, it's obviously one that has a lot of controversy associated with it. Um, 
What we look for at Columbus Public Health is not to take a stand specifically on whether or not carbon dioxide is a actually contributing to global warming. What we look at is that those same emissions from vehicles, yes, they do produce carbon dioxide, but they also produce particulate matter, which increases the likelihood of people having breathing problems because of chronic breathing disease or chronic breathing problems, asthma, and things mm -hmm. like that. So literally the same emissions from coal burning power plants, from diesel engines, from the cars that we drive, um, from you know a lot of those things, those same emissions create uh, public health issues when it comes to breathing mm -hmm. and creating clean air. We all want clean air, so if we reduce those uh, the, that infrastructure of those vehicles, if you will, that creates the carbon dioxide in addition to some of those other particulate matters that is burning from the combustible engine. You know, or the coal burning power plants, mm -hmm. by, by reducing those, we're both perhaps reducing the, the carbon or the carbon dioxide that is creating global warming or climate change. They call it anthropogenic mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. or, but we're also making sure that we are creating uh, a cleaner air for everybody in the community. Mm. So we kind of look at it from that perspective. Um, from my personal perspective, um, I am, I, with most, the vast majority of climate scientists in the world, mm -hmm. from all sorts of different agencies, from all different parts of the world, completely and utterly agree that humans are causing mm -hmm. or a major part of mm -hmm. climate change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, kind of, that's my perspective. So to answer the caller directly, me personally, yes, we are causing climate change or exacerbating climate change. From the public health perspective, we're looking at it from a different, through a different lens. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And there's probably all kinds of different reasons for climate change, you know, science, spiritual, you know, look mm -hmm. at the earth, how long it's been here and how many times it has had a climate change. That's true. So that's your own opinion. That's very true. Sherelle, do you have a question? Yes, I do. And to piggyback on that, I think it, it all just depends on not being wasteful and conserving energy. I've right. ta yeah, I've taken a life in earth science class. So I do know about conserving energy and carpooling and not trying to add emission to our atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, in regards, for both of you guys, in regards with the severe storm on the horizon, what have we learned from the last storm and what improvements can be made in regards to the crisis that happened? Let, let me jump on that. Okay. Uh, first of all, I always talk about plan, prepare, and practice. We need everyone out there in the community to know that this emergency is going to happen to you and to be ready for it when it does happen. Uh, let's even give the emergency, uh, we'll talk about weapons of mass destruction, the shooting incident that happened in Colorado. Okay. I heard an FBI agent gave a good point the other day. He said the first thing to do is to run. Second thing, to take shelter in place, hide, or evacuate. Okay. And then the third thing was to fight. But one of, one of the things about running, if you see an incident, an emergency incident, the train wreck recently, we had someone that was injured who ran towards the incident. I can understand what he was doing, but he was not dressed like we are. We have personal protection equipment. We size up the situation. We've been trained on handling the emergency. I understand he wanted to try to rescue somebody, but at the last split second, he realized this might not be a good thing to do, so he turned around and ran in the opposite direction. That saved his life because he had second and third degree burns on his backs from the flash of the blevy. Mm -hmm. So you need to plan and prepare and practice. And the other thing I'd like to see happen, I'd like to see churches, faith-based institutions become more involved in sheltering their members. The Red Cross and Franklin County EMA are the ones that set the shelters or even the city sets up cooling places like parks and recreation centers. What would be the better place for you to go? The recreation center or your church that has air conditioning? Your church might even have a kitchen and you can bring all the food over there that's going bad in your home and all the members could have their breakfast, lunch, and dinner and all their recreational activities mm -hmm. between that eight and five area. So that's be, have a plan, prepare, and practice. Think about those things. <clears throat> well, real quick, because I, I know we're running out of time also, but um, we have a caller that's uh, still on, on the line. Caller, are you there with your question or your comment? Um, yes. Hi. Um, my name is Cherish. Um, I just want to know, um, okay, basically, we all know about the chemtrails um, ever since about 1996, I believe. Um, you know, I still see them, and I was just wondering, like, 
do they help the environment? Because from what I hear, the aluminum and the uh, uh, barium in them, you know, they actually, um, you know, mess up people's breathing. Okay. So I just want to know about that. Okay, I believe that's the, the she, she's talking about the, the, the trails that you see up mm, in the sky, the, the jet stream trails. Oh, yeah. Um, that that they are giving off um, something there that would 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 is creating a hazard also sure. to health. Of course. Um, so is is there? You almost want to say is, is there emission controls for jets and airplanes and those type of things as there are in cars? Oh yes, absolutely. I mean, there there's definitely emission controls on on most uh, you know transportation vehicles, mm -hmm. planes, buses, cars, and vehicles and things like mm -hmm. that. And she brings up a good point. I mean, that is just an additional. Um, just observation, I suppose, of another um, human instance behavior, and human behavior. Doing something mm -hmm. to the environment, to the earth. It's mm -hmm. a petroleum product. Yeah. You know, so do we get rid of flying? Right. Or do we right. find some other way to fly? Some right. other energy to help us to get through there. So. Yes. And you know what? You brought up a really good point um, before, and I'm glad, I'm glad that the caller came in to kind of bring us back to this. One of the things that the Columbus Public Health that we suggest to combat Climate change is to simply carpool, mm, get on your yes. bike and ride. Good point. These are all things, take a walk, walk to work. These are all things that you can do that help the environment as much as they help your health as well. Plant trees. Plant trees. Yeah. Get active in your community. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and, and, I, and, I, and I know the city has is, is, you know, really started doing, you know, doing that with, with the green spot going mm, on. Absolutely. And then also we've got bikes now to ride and what have you. So... We, you, they're, they're trying to make sure, that, you know, that, that you do carpooling. Mm -hmm. And I know there's always, you know, talking about, you know, using CODA, mm -hmm. you know, you, so using those other modes of transportation to take a lot of vehicles and what have you off the, uh, uh, off, off the, the, the streets, c creating additional emissions. Now, we're running out of time, Sherelle. I know you probably had 20 more questions. It did go so fast. It, it did go right fast. We've yeah. got about a minute and a half. So if they've got questions, you know, for, you know, for Columbus Public Health and sure. disaster preparedness or all these different issues that we've talked about, where, where can they call? Well, uh, they can call me if they'd like to. My phone number is 614-645-2404. Um, they can reach me on email at mmmcnutt at columbus.gov. Um, I'm usually fairly accessible. I'm more than happy to help uh, answer any questions at any time about anything disaster-related. Um, they can call. You can call whenever, and I'll be more than happy to, to assist you. If you would like us to come out and talk to your group or community or organization, we would be happy to do that as well. Excellent. All right, Sherelle, last words. And as a citizen, what can I do to be more nope, proactive? No, you, you can't ask a question. You got last words. We got one oh, minute to well, go. Say one minute. Okay, well, I just what? want to say goodbye, goodbye, and then I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for having me, and truly a grateful experience. Well, we, yeah. we, we're, we're glad that you were here. You know, she, yeah. she, was, she made it happen here. This was great. You know, and, and even though you're not from Capitol, you know, yeah. because that's my alma mater. So, you know, but we'll, we'll, we'll let you slide on that. So, Rick, glad that you were here. Maybe we'll have you back or, you know, we'll probably see her on, you know, one of the major news stations here after, <laughs> after a while. You, know, you just never know. And, and also, um, Mike, glad that you were here. You know, a lot of great information. We had a lot of great calls, yes. you know, so um, I'm sure other persons will be giving you a call sure. to, to find out more about, about what you guys are doing. There's so much. Lieutenant Sawyer, as always. Thank you so much. <laughs> and for our viewing audience, thank you so much for, for, for tuning, tuning in um, with, our, with our show. And make sure every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. here on CTV. Have a great week and take care.